The notation of isotopes in radioactive systems is principally identical to stable isotopes with one important difference. Now in general, the notation works as follows. Delta is the isotope ratio in a sample divided by the isotope ratio in a standard minus one, and all of this times 1000, or if the epsilon notation times 10,000. Now let's have a look at a isotope decay system, and I'll take 176 lutetium decaying to 176 hafnium, and this is usually normalized to 177 hafnium. Now down here in this equation, we need something to normalize to. And what we typically measure is the 176-77 hafnium ratio. So we'd normalize also to a ratio in some standard. And the standard, um, the contradict uniform reservoir is often used, or core. Now this core 177 divided by 76 hafnium ratio also changes over time, because of course there's lutetium decaying to hafnium also in, in core. And then the question is, what kind of 77-76 ratio do we use for the core standard value? Maybe we could use the, the value of today, or we could use the value at the beginning of the solar system, or whatever other ratio. Now for this, let's have a look at one of these plots, in which 176, 177 half nims on the y-axis. So this is essentially an evolution plot, because the time is on the x-axis. If we then have this core reservoir, which is typically CI chondrites, for example, it evolves something like this. And of course, for example, the depleted mantle will evolve um, a little bit steeper, maybe something like, like this here. And then the crust evolves something like this. And then if a rock forms at this time here, then we need to, then we need to define to what um, 60, uh, 76, 77 half new ratio we want to normalize it. And what is done here is that we normalize it to the core value at the same time. And if a, um, a rock forms here, then we normalize it to the core value also at this time, which means we need to calculate the core value um, depending on what rock we're looking at and or at what at, at what time this rock formed. And this is what is um, uh, different in this notation of the radioactive decay system. Now from this we can draw a second plot. And in the second plot there's the epsilon. Epsilon because the differences are quite small. 176, 177 half new on the y-axis, and again the time on the, on the x-axis. Now we can um, um, write the delta, or the epsilon value, and also for cool. Then we then take, for example, this core sample here, and have this core sample, and normalize it to core. And of course, these are the same values, so we divide the same values by each other, which will give 1, minus 1 is 0, times 10,000 is again 0. And the same for this, we get a core value, or an epsilon value for this core, also for 0. And this is why core is always 0 in this plot here. So this is core. Let's look at the depleted mantle. So we take this one here, and it has a certain distance from, from core, and then the second has a larger distance, which means the depleted mantle develops something like this here. Now the crust, which is quite interesting, is below the core line here, which means the values will always be below the core line. So it's not that for, for, for some weird reason this um, the radiogenic evolution of the core is different here. This is just because of how we notate, notate these um, delta values here. That's all we're doing. Um, and on a side note, although this looks like lines, these are not lines, it's just the half-life of um, this system is quite long, about 37 billion years or so, and this is why it looks like straight lines over the um, time span of, of Earth formation, which is four and a half billion years. Now, how can we actually calculate this? And um, as an example, there are different ways to do this. I show again an evolution plot with the time here. 
And on the y-axis, there's the, for example, 176 lutetium and the 176 half new. Now the lutetium decays here with the decay equation E2 minus lambda times T and the half new increases at the same time and the amount of increase is the amount of what lutetium, amount of lutetium that decreases. So this is 1 minus E2 minus lambda T. Now if we know the initial value of the lutetium, so if we know this initial value, we can calculate the exact curve here. And uh, if we know the initial value for lutetium, we can also calculate the increase in half new by again um, multiplying this here with the same with the same n. Because of course what is decaying is what is uh, accumulating. So this is how we can do this. So we have a equation here that we can use to actually um, calculate this plot here and from this then also this plot here. And this is what I like to show in the over here. So here I already prepared a number of um, values we need. So this is the decay constant of 176 lutetium. This is the initial value of half 176.77. This is the lutetium initial of 176, 177 of Kur, then of the depleted mantle and of the crust. So now I can um, simply take the equation I just showed, which is then 1 minus E2, and then I copy the lambda here, times T. And this is already the equation to calculate how much half number 176 is added or accumulated, so I can plot this for t from 0 to 4.5 billion years. And this is then how this looks like. And I can specify this for the initial value of, oh, so this must be minus lambda, of course. So it looks like this. Much makes, makes much more sense. This is the increase over time. And then I can specify this for the initial amount of lutetium 76, 77 in the chondritic uniform reservoir. It looks like that, just the y-axis changed a little bit. And then I can add the initial. And then this is already um, the half num initial, sorry. And then this is already the correct, uh, the correct plot here. And I can make the same and add the other two reservoirs so I add here the depleted mantle initial for lutetium and the crust initial for lutetium hafnium. And I get this plot that I just um, illustrated a little bit with in blue the, um, the cool reservoir, in orange the depleted mantle and in green the crust. Now from this I then can calculate the epsilon values. So I take the, the equation here that calculates the amount of um, half new that, that is basically accumulated over time. And then I divide this by the standard, which in this case is also Kur, minus one, and all of this times 10,000. And then make the same for the other two reservoirs again. So for the depleted mantle, so I change here for the depleted mantle and then I change in the third for the crust, and this is it already. And I can, again, plot this for t from zero to billion years, and then we get this plot. So now we have the, the, the same plot now in epsilon notation. Um, Kur is all the time zero, the depleted mantle is now increasing slightly, and the crust is depleting. And I made a little bit more a nicer plot here to show this again. These are exactly the two same plots. And I can change the time here and you can see how these different reservoirs evolve over time and how this is represented in the, the evolution plot and in the epsilon plot. And just uh, to show a little bit how in, well, to show these are not straight lines but really curves, I increased the y-axis at the x-axis here and then you can see that over time, 
these uh, really develop into some, oh, I'm sorry, I forgot to increase the time. Um, otherwise this won't work. And then you can see with over time, these curves really change or become real banded curves here in both plots because the curves of the evolution plot also um, uh, carried over to the to the epsilon plot. So this is the one difference um, from stable isotope notation to the isotope notation in radioactive decay system that it's important to calculate also the isotope, to always calculate the isotope ratio of the standard isotope ratio.